Well, hello there, and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Um, I'm actually working on something pretty amazing, at least I think it is. Um, and there will be an announcement video for that when it's done. It's almost a completion. But meanwhile, here's a tutorial. Um, so what this is, is a solid state toggleable sequencer. And what does that mean? If I turn this on, you'll see that it works like a clock, except instead of just on and off, it actually has multiple steps. And you can extend this with as many repeaters as you want to have as many steps as you want. And each of those steps can be brought out into its own, um, you know, whatever input device you want. And it can trigger things in sequence. And that could be useful for, I don't know, light shows or animatronics using pistons or whatever you want note blocks, whatever you want. Um, it, it's very useful to have a sequencer. Um, and then if we click this, it turns off, which is what makes it toggleable. Now, a lot of sequencers just use the standard repeater circle, where you have a repeater, and then a repeater this way, and then a repeater this way, and then a repeater this way, and then you set them all to whatever delay you want, you put some blocks in between, which will be your outputs. And then you have your input. And people just use a torch, usually, to create the initial pulse. And then they get this, right? And that's the usual way to do it. The problem is, it's not very toggleable. Um, and by that, I mean the only way to turn it off is to permanently turn it off. Either you break something and it turns off, or the other method is you can use repeater locks and then just give an input into that. The problem with the repeater lock method is if you turn it off, or if you press the button, I should say, at the wrong time, it'll actually turn it permanently on on all the inputs instead of turning it off, which is very not good. And even if you do manage to time it right and you get the whole thing turned off, you can't turn it on again without manually placing your blocks, um, like I did before, which is kind of annoying. So instead, I came up with this design, which takes that repeater circle, but it incorporates a comparator as a shutoff switch, and it incorporates a pulse limiter here, or a two-tick pulse generator, as an on switch. And then I just hook them both up to the same input, but inverted, so that when I turn, when I, when this switch is like this, it turns this comparator off, which turns the entire system off. But when I flip this again, this will turn off, allowing the signal through, and then this will turn on, which will come through this generator and produce a two-tick pulse, which starts the clock back up again, and the sequence starts again. So that allows you to have a nice sequencer. Yeah. Uh, so you can see everything you need like just from this view right here. It's very simple, but I will rebuild it again to show you how it works. So basically, you want to create your initial repeater circle, and it can be any delay you want. I'm going with a two tick delay because one tick delay just seems too fast for most things. But if you want a one tick delay, you can leave it at one tick, you know, whatever your delay is. And of course, each of these can be set separately, so you can actually sequence different events with different delays in between them. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have a few different ones, and in this case I only had a single circle. Uh, here I'm going to actually extend this to show you that it can be extended, and this one will be a 4 tick delay, because it can be, this one will be a 1 tick delay. Sure. And then, um, that's pretty much it, and then we just have the inputs here. And all we have to do is where we want the sequence to start, instead of putting a repeater, we put a comparator there, on subtract mode, going into a repeater, and then the rest of it is as normal. Um, yeah, so then we just hook all of these up in a circle with some redstone dust. You can use blocks in there as well if you want. There will be, this does need to be a redstone dust though, 
so that it'll connect it. Uh, actually, no, this one doesn't. Um, but this one over here will need to be because it's a two wide gap. Um, but yeah, I just took all of these up. So that's the clock done. So if I were to create a very quick pulse there, I get this clock. But as I showed you before, a simple clock like this has problems um, where you can't toggle it very well. So that's where this comes in, our uh, little shutoff switch, which is just putting a switch into that comparator so that you can do this. And then after the last sequence is finished, it shuts off and stays off. But now we want to be able to turn it back on. So we use a comparator here, a repeater here set to two ticks, piece of redstone, and then a redstone all in here. So whenever this gets a signal, it's going to send the signal through here, but then two ticks later it's going to shut itself off, and so that'll basically make it a two tick pulse, which is exactly what we want. Um, and so now you could leave it like this and then just have two separate things, so you can have an on switch and an off switch, but it seems kind of silly to do that when you can just hook them up to the same switch, right? Because you're not going to have on and off at the same time, that doesn't make sense. So basically, you just invert this switch here. Um, how did I do it there? Yeah, I just went straight across. And then send that signal into the pulse generator. So now, the clock is on. If I flip this, this will turn it off. And if I flip this, the torch will send another pulse and trigger it to turn back on again. Uh, so yeah, this is basically... This is it. Um, you can use this for... I don't know, counters or, like I said, anything that needs to be sequenced for mini games or you know, computers even, I guess. You might need to sequence some things, although that's kind of rare. Um, but light shows, fireworks displays, um, music blocks, whatever you want. Um, this is how you would make a sequencer that is fully toggleable and solid state, meaning no moving parts, no pistons, no dispensers, no droppers, none of that. Um, it also means it's fully silent, by the way, which is good. So yeah, until next time, keep sequencing, keep redstoning.